We usually don't. It just, it just, it just hits. It's our webinar. It's our on recording. Stop share the like button. So happy, uh, happy March 27th. So she usually runs it on the computer. That might be more helpful. All right. So I hereby call to order uh, the March meeting of the Clearview Library District Board of Trustees at 5.31 p.m. I'd like to join everybody in reciting our mission statement with me. Cultivate curiosity, enlighten your mind. All right, and Director King, can we proceed with roll call? Yes, Valderrama. Here. Brodsky. Donworth. Here. Gallardi. Here. Gerstner. Here. We have with us tonight Attorney Garcia. We also have staff members Casey Lanzinger Pierce, our public services manager, Chrissy Henschler, our communications specialist, Aaron Mitchell, our financial and HR specialist, Natalie Wagner, our office manager, also our secretary uh, for minutes for the board. We have Jesse Feeble from IT managing our IT tonight. We have Becca Sharp, who is our children's librarian and supervisor, and Katie Northern, who is our mobile services supervisor, and me and Clint and Clint, library director. All right, sounds good. So to review tonight's agenda, uh, we have our director's report. Uh, tonight we're going to be trying our new uh, way we're doing the liaison reports. Uh, so we'll be asking follow-up questions, followed by treasurer's report, friends and foundation. And uh, old business um, and new business, and then we'll review the upcoming agenda and adjourn. Does anyone have any changes that they want to make to the agenda? All right, then. Uh, I don't think there's any sense in moving staff up because there are three new agenda items and two of them involve staff. Yeah, yeah. So I think we'll just leave the agenda. Okay, as, as we'll leave it as is. Yeah. Is that different than what I got no. last week? No, it's three new new agenda items. Unless you want to put some from media last. Three new business. Three new business items. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so we now we're moving on in the agenda to public input. Do we have anyone in the call that's from the public? Uh, we have currently Jennifer Bradley's in the call. And uh, Frank Balzar is in the call as well, um, but no public input at this time. All right. Okay, so go ahead and read the statement, or do we want to defer with the statement? If we can defer, Jerry. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, next to topic of business director's report. <laughs> the report was included in your packets. Does anybody have any questions on the director's report? We do have a communication, um, and I'd like to read this to you because um, so <laughs> Macy and myself, it's from Foster Hepler, who is one of our children's services assistants. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, Foster is a retired school principal, and um, he wanted to work with kids again. He missed them after he retired, and so he applied for a job with Clearview Library District to do children's programming. So this is what he had to say, and he asked me to please share it with the board tonight. Hello, I want both of you, meaning Casey and myself, to know how greatly I appreciate your leadership with the remodel here at the library. You are both to be commended on an outstanding, and that's in capital letters, job. The emails with regular updates and explanations were so appreciated and kept everyone very well informed. The design is so modern and more user-friendly with something new for all ages. The furniture is a major, also capital letters. <laughs> I had an opportunity this past Saturday to take several patrons on a tour of the new library. They were all very impressed and had nothing but wonderful positive comments. I certainly know how this huge capital letters project could have gone. I don't know how this huge project could have gone any smoother. 
When dealing with construction, there will always be setbacks and delays, no matter what the circumstances. I applaud you both for a superior effort from start to finish. I hope you know what a tremendous impact this will have on the entire community for years to come. Kudos, capital letters, to you both. You should be very proud of this beautiful facility. Respectfully, Foster Heffler. Well, that's wonderful. That's great. So he he's applied to work? No, no, no it's more on staff. Oh, for, okay. Yeah, about a year and a half at this point. Coming yeah. on two years, I think. Mm -hmm. Part time. He is part time. Yeah, he's that he only wants. He's time. remarkable. He yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he does not. Want to back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. That's great feedback and definitely a testament to the uh, last couple of months you both have been championing to uh, get this repair innovation. So I, I know it's really exciting to watch everything come together. Oh, it's really awesome. Yeah. All right. Anything else for the director's report? Want to cover? Any questions on the statistics? It oh. was a slower month because of mm -hmm. being closed mm -hmm. um, or and being under renovation. We were actually open, but under renovation, and I think that discouraged people. Yeah. One thing I just want to bring to the attention of the board is that we, if you notice in the agenda, we've actually folded the personnel report into the director's report, mm -hmm. so we're no longer doing a separate personnel report. So if anyone does have questions about that as well, um, now's a good time to ask. I've got a question. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, why, why did we pull it? Because it, it seemed redundant. Um, it was in the director's report anyway, and so it seemed redundant to have it out there again and have Rochelle or it was going to be Cole's turn to report, and it's already there. So I think in the interest of making our, our meetings flow a little bit faster than they have been doing, if, if anybody has any questions about the personnel, I'll be happy to answer them. But to deliver a report that's already written seemed redundant, Ron. Casey? I couldn't see her lips moving. The screen is too small. Oh, do you, do you need to repeat it? No, and I got it. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any last questions regarding the director's report? Any comments? All right, All right then. Uh, we'll move on to the next topic I mean, on, on the agenda. The, any follow up questions to the liaison reports that were submitted? So they were included in our packets. So this time we only had a report from Julie. I think it's because it's new. Mm -hmm. Our liaisons probably need to get used to um, the board packets go up Friday before the board meeting. And I need all the information to get it into the packets by that. Thursday before the board meet, the Thursday, the week before. So uh, Frank and Ray, um, if you have anything to report, if you could get it to me the Thursday before board packets go out, that would be great. So since, sorry. For the record, uh, at 5.39, Vice President Brodsky is present. Uh, she's not vice she's president. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, still sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in the interest of these transitions, I'd like to open up the floor to our liaisons to offer any uh, updates that they have that pertain to any developments in the library, um, anything, some partnership opportunities, anything that the library should be aware of. So, Frank, do you, do you have anything you want to bring up? Okay. Oh. He has like the public and not on. Oh, he has a public. Yeah, he's Okay. Can you speak from that? Can, can you can you speak from that or? You can. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, we can allow him to speak if Frank has something to say. Uh, his, his microphone. Oh, 
Yeah. Uh, can you hear us, Frank? Or? Ah, there I go. Okay, I've been allowed to speak. <laughs> um, the uh, Town of Severance is starting to put together its summer activity schedule. Uh, we've actually hired a, a new individual to help manage our, let's call it the party planner. So um, if the library wishes to coordinate uh, some of our events, severance days and other uh, concert series, um, now would be a time to to chat with them and see what kind of you know best placement would be. That sounds fantastic. Do you have that person's name that you just sent to? to uh, we just hired them. They were in the, the I'm sorry, I don't remember the name off top of my head. Who it is and okay. the public services team now. Oh, fantastic. Thanks though, Jeremy. Okay. All right, anything else, Frank, that oh. we should bring up? No, I mean there's a rumor we're getting water, but that's not again until end of the end of the year. We'll find out. Okay. Great, thank you. Nothing to report for me yet. Okay. So I need another uh, month to get my legs in. That's so interesting. Need to report. Sounds good. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions about any of the other reports? Uh, Julie Klein submitted something on the town of Windsor. I know she's not here tonight, but if you questions we want to capture and want to follow up with? Nope. No questions. Okay, then. We'll uh, follow on. Next Next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Trustee Dunworth. Hi, how's everybody? So uh, for February, we actually did pretty well in terms of revenue inbound. Uh, our property tax was a million seventy four thousand seven received uh, with this, you know, the uh, specialized tax of 17 and some change and other of twenty three thousand nine hundred. That twenty three thousand nine hundred actually is interest, which has gone up substantially for what it was a year and a half ago. Uh, <laughs> we've done very well. So uh, can you put up the treasurer's report on the screen? Yes, sir. Um, Who's running? Uh, keep going, keep going. Yep, I was trying to page 10. Yeah. Almost. Is it Jesse? Yeah, yes, yeah, it's me. <laughs> okay, hi. There we go. So that's the balance sheet. Keep going. Yep. One more. Yeah, slide thir slide 13. Okay, keep 13. going. There we go. There we go. There, so I, I, you can see we actually netted up month to month change at the bottom, six hundred eighty-two thousand uh, dollars. Our actual, you know, month to month expenditures for operating was like three hundred and five thousand. So for the two month period in February, we're fourteen percent of expenditures. So we're doing very well um, as far as how late for the first two months of the year. Um, current balances are strong. Uh, and I know Anne and Aaron both have a plan to start paying severance bills out of our uh, Bank of San Juan numbers as well out of the out of the Dola grant, which is 500 grand and doesn't show up here, but it shouldn't because we haven't got the money yet. So uh, that's about it for the treasurer's report. All right, thank you. So the floor is open for a motion to accept the treasurer's report. No move. I was moved by or uh, motions made by trustee trustee uh, Gershner. Looking for a second. Correct. I'll second that. All right. Move and seconded. All in favor of accepting the treasury report. Aye. 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 All right. So so the treasury report has been accepted and approved. So kind of as a satellite, if you convert that one point uh, one six six million to pesos, that's twenty million five hundred and eighty nine thousand pesos. <laughs> Uh, maybe we should start counting our money pesos. We feel a lot better. Yeah. Uh, we, we feel richer. We, we do want to review the record report in Spanish for us. <laughs> no. No. All right. If I could just make a quick comment on, I really appreciate the new summary of the revenue and expenditures. I feel like that is a lot more readable rather than all of the detail in the previous one. So. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Erin. She worked hard on that. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> Great. All right. 
Next I up. promised her lunch for abusing her on a couple of things too. I want to go on record, so I owe Aaron a lunch. Um, <laughs> she doesn't want a lunch. She just wants you to stop abusing her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do it in a nice way. We will budge. All right. Next on the agenda is the Friends and Foundation Report. Trustee Brusky. Uh, last meeting was a week ago yesterday. Um, the sip swap and shop um, was well attended, made about $250. Um, I can't remember the name of the, the shop owner. Oh, Words of Wind. Samantha. Oh, the owner, Samantha. sorry, Samantha. Yeah. I was very pleased that it brought a lot of new people to the store and you know was enjoying the partnership. Um, the all tickets for the tea with Nina, which is this year's um, iteration of when uh, of Clearview Reads, all the tickets are sold um, with somewhere north of 51 tickets, and that's for April 22nd. Still working on a tie-in hike um, up in the mountains for when the weather's warm. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, talking about Harvest Festival Parade and or booth, seeing how they can, um, how the Friends and Foundation can have a presence there. Um, already talking about um, a well-known author, possibly, for 2024 is Clear Name Reads. Um, hoping to have the next meeting at uh, the, the Windsor branch so that the Friends and Foundation can check out all the changes. And, and of course, looking forward to meeting with us and brainstorming on how to um, really figure out a purpose and what we want them to do, what we feel they can do, and getting a director and just meeting us face to face. Which will be next Thursday. Yep, joint work session. We're hoping at the Windows Beverage Library. Uh, I think, yes, we, there'll be so many people for that that we actually have to be there. Have you reserved a room, though? Mm -hmm. What was that case? A room? Mm -hmm. Do we have a room? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll be at 6 p.m. Yeah. Thanks, Okay. Yeah, you do. Good idea. Okay. That was exciting that they sold out their tickets. That's great. Quickly. Okay. Any, uh, anything else? Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> All right, then we'll move on to old business. First item of old business is to approve the minutes for the February 23rd regular board meeting. So moved. All right, so we have a motion to approve the minutes for February 23rd meeting by Trustee Gershner. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right, it's move, move and second to, to uh, approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Any all Aye. opposed? All right, and, and, uh, the minutes have been approved for February meeting. Next item is the approval for the minutes for the March 6th special meeting of the board, which was where the uh, the uh, trustee interviews were held and the selection was made. The floor is open for a motion. Do you approve the minutes? I did not attend that meeting. You can't. Okay. I didn't okay. No, you don't. Right. So, can I, can I second or? We don't have a first yet. We don't have a first. And okay. What did you just ask for again? We're, oh, we're asking for approval for the minutes for the March 6th special meeting. That was the, the, the interviews. The only issue was the interviews. Well, I, I, I moved to approve. All right. So there's, there's a motion to approve by Trustee Kirchner. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. She's not voting tonight. That's, that's oh, okay. Sorry. Designated. Ron can. Why? No, we still have one board member. Sure. Why can't she vote? Jeremy just has to recognize. Okay. Her. She has to be asked. All right. So I hereby, I hereby uh, recognize Trustee Gillard, Trustee Gillard, Alderman Gillard, to uh, voting status for this and the remainder of our actions this evening. Yeah. So, uh, up, Trustee Gillard, would, would you still second? Yes. Okay, so we move to second to approve the minutes for the March 6th meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. And so it carries the approval of minutes. 
Next item on old business is a facilities update. So, some exciting news. Um, if you look up, you'll see Tectum panels. That was one of the last things uh, to do in this building, is to do the Tectum panels, which should help with the sound. Uh, the other thing they did yesterday was adjust our lights and get all the light fixtures that we were waiting, that were back ordered. Those are all in. Um, so I think pretty much they are done with this building. So we'll be able to get a financial close out on this, on this building very soon. Uh, as far as the Windsor Library, we're getting very, very close. Today, we were getting our final shipment of shelving installed. Uh, we also got all of our white marker boards installed in the meeting rooms today. Um, we have a few little things to do. We're still waiting on some uh, LED lights for the hanging fixtures. Those haven't been done yet. Um, I'm trying to think. It's very minimal what's left to do. So we'll be closing out that project soon. We'll be having a grand reopening. Um, well, Chrissy, why don't you tell people about the grand reopening ceremony? <laughs> so um, in April, it was National Libraries Week, beginning April 23rd. And uh, there will be daily themes, which we'll they love to know about. Um, but to kick off National Libraries Week, um, the daily theme is Shelton Sunday, but we're also hosting, like Ann said, a grand reopening celebration of the library. Um, I'm coordinating with Natalie on getting, you know, snacks and light beverages. Um, I went back and looked at some photos from the last one um, from a long time ago to get some ideas. And we'll have tours and a fact sheet that talks about, um, you know, what improvements were made and, um, you know, kind of highlight all the things that were made. Which is actually really fun. What's the date again? Um, it'll be, I had the daytime, but it'll be Sunday, April. 23rd from 1 30 to 3 30. Um, the invitation or the event just got posted on our website. So I'll send you guys all an email for Spirit Week because there's some really fun things you guys can dress up and stop by the library and take pictures. We <laughs> <laughs> have online so we can highlight you. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, there, it yeah. would be good if we had some board members there. We are inviting Ratio Architects, Friends and Pittman, uh, Construction, and Wemper. We're inviting the town boards, um, both Severance and Matt Windsor, the board. They'll all be receiving invitations, as well as some of the administrative staff from those organizations and the public. Our public will all receive invitations. So it would be good if we had some board members there that day. This will be like an open house kind of Yeah, it'll be, yeah. We'll, we'll do like a little bit of a formal speech. Like Jeremy, you and I will say something. Um, and then you know, then we'll give the tours, as Chrissy said, and we'll have some beverages and some cookies. Um, All right. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then let just people wander around. I'll send you guys all like a very detailed email with everything that you uh, you have a life. And then uh, as far as severance, I understand that we are on the planning commission agenda for Tuesday night, February not February. Or not February. Uh, April 18th. April, I think it's, it's the Tuesday after tax day, right around. <laughs> yeah, it is tax day. Yeah. It is that is tax day. Right. So that Tuesday night, we're on the planning commission. And then normally um, it takes a month between planning commission and the city council meeting. But I understand we are on the first city council meeting, which I believe is May 9th. Um, so we will want some people there, uh, the trustees there too, to answer any questions that the town council might have. And of course, our architect will be there and somebody from Friends and Pittman and our owner's rep will all be there. I will be there um, to answer any questions, but that's when we get hopefully site plan approval. Um, and that's pretty much it right now for severance until that happens. Did anybody have any questions about facilities? So, you know, if you take a walk in Windsor, it keeps changing. Like the new shelving is there, it looks great. Uh, today was an unusually busy day at Windsor. There were lots and lots of people there. Becca was there today. Uh, it was crowded, all the areas were crowded. We had several 
door times. One was in our new programming room. The other one was in our large meeting room. There was uh, Getting Crafty, which is at 3.15 in the afternoon. That was well attended. And there were just lots and lots of people coming in because the kids are on spring break this week for the Weld RE4 school district. So lots and lots of use today, which was encouraging. That's great. I've got a question. Right. Did uh, there was a dispute last month that we discussed regarding ratio? Has that been straightened out with them? We have not received a check yet, or the Friends and Foundation have not received a check yet. But Brooke from Weber has been emailing Kitty regularly, reminding her that the shelving is in and the bill needs to be paid, and that mm -hmm. they need, you know need to make good on their promise. Um, so. We'll do, see. Do we, are they still invoicing us for services for the main library? I believe they are. I'd have to go back and check and see in owner insight what the last invoice was for. I'm assuming those bills are more than $9,000. Your design fees were, I don't know that we're, I, I don't know if we finished paying all the design fees yet. I'll have to get back to you, Cole, on okay. that one. Because I believe the motion that was approved was that was the assumption that they were going to fulfill what they said they would. And so uh, I would suggest until that's done, we withhold a uh, final payment on the main library. Attorney Garcia, do you want to weigh in on that? I'll, I'll take a look at the uh, contract and and we'll move forward as directed. Okay. Any other questions about Dolly's update? All right then, moving on then to the board member appointment update. So, uh, as of, of today, um, our Kendra Adams, who was chosen by the board to fill Cheryl uh, resignate, <laughs> resignation, um, We've got Town of Windsor did ratify the appointment. We are on the agenda for the school board agenda for the 17th of this month. Uh, we will not be on the severance agenda until Jeremy and I go up and talk to the mayor, which we're doing next Tuesday yep. at 10 a.m. He wants to, he has some questions for us and so not on the agenda yet in severance. And I have not heard anything from the city of Rayleigh. So that's where we are right now. So we currently don't have a ratified board member. Yeah, when, when were uh, they all put under notice of the appointment? So it was it the, the next day or? It was it, within a day. It was within It was within a day. I, I sent the message out. We were in that March 8th? 6th. March 6th, yeah. So uh, giving two days, that's March, April, May 8th. Is under the statute. It's the 60 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That's important. Yeah, good to know. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So, uh, like Director Kling said, we'll be meeting with the town of the mayor from the town of Severance on Tuesday, and we'll, I'm hoping to get you this long. Okay. That concludes our old business. Move on to new business. The first item up is the social media policy. Hello. Um, you had, have, had sent to you a working document on the social media policy. It was uh, reviewed by the policy committee, which is President Valderrama and alternate Gilardi. Gilardi. Yes. Um, there were very few changes to that one. There were there was some grammar, nothing major. Um, this is a policy that we've had for many years now, and it has served us well. Uh, Chris, it was reviewed by Chris, uh, Chris H. I was going to just chime in quickly and say that um, when I did go through this, I made sure to go look at the ALA website, website to make sure that um, our language followed suit, and it did. Okay. Um, the only thing, I, like I said, I, I added very minor things, but I did mention, um, you know, I think I added language. Yeah, um, but that was like one of the, 
been here reversed. Yeah, the only other noteworthy addition was just that first blurb and that first paragraph describing why we have social media presence <laughs> and, and what the purpose of that was. Um, and so, yeah, so, so this one really kind of addresses how we moderate comments and interactions and just sets, sets the expectations there. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so the uh, I'm willing to move to wait the second reading. Okay, so we only have to request a second reading, so it's, it's not even a, a motion we need to make. Um, so really, the floor is open for a motion to uh, to approve this as read tonight. So move. I second. All right. So moved by Trustee Dunworth, seconded by uh, Trustee Gershner. Any other any further discussion? All right, all in favor of approving the social media policy as read tonight, let's say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so so approved uh, with the social media policy. All right, we will get we will get it posted with the changes. All right. The uh, next item on the agenda is the team space policy. So we have this beautiful new team space, and now we need some guidelines, a policy for the use of this space. So I am going to turn this over to Casey and Becca to answer your questions. They can tell you how we arrived at this policy, and then Jeremy and Lisa can chime in on any changes that were made. But go ahead, Casey. Well, our team librarian, Amy McFadden, as you can see, uh, that's highlighted in the memo that we provided. Uh, spoke to several library districts in the state of Colorado. Um, we specifically were looking for library districts that um, offer team space similar to what we have now, um, including the use of video game gaming, which we will now offer. Um, and so after compiling that, we kind of sat down to determine what resonated with us and what we wanted to enforce in our own team space and came up with the draft policy that you have in front of you. Uh, Jeremy was really integral, and so was Lisa in helping us fine tune it um, and just get it to a good place to present to you all tonight. Um, we feel that this policy ensures that teens stay safe. We feel like it ensures that it's a welcoming environment that teens have a sense of ownership on, um, but still allows those that wanna browse the collection that's in the teen space to obviously access that. Um, so we're happy. Becca, sorry, do you have anything to add in addition to that? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that you summed it up really well. I think that we're just really excited about this new space and um, anxious to, I've already seen a lot of teams yeah. in there this yeah. week, especially since spring break, and it's very exciting to see them um, in there and they just have, you know, they have more room. And so it, it's really, we're very grateful for that. Yeah, I, we mentioned that in the first paragraph, we really did not have much of a teen space at all, if you guys recall, prior to the remodel. I mean, and so we did see teens in the library, but it, you know, it wasn't much. They would obviously show up for programs, but as far as hanging out in the teen space we provided, there wasn't a lot of square footage dedicated to them. So it was kind of hard to congregate in that area. So, um, so yeah, we're very excited and we're happy to answer any questions you might have about what you see in front of you tonight. Do you have the final product? We don't. It was the thing. I, 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 I have. Yeah. I'm happy to share. I can put it on. Do it right. it, it hasn't changed from the last revision that Lisa and I sent out last late last week, uh, where we, we submitted a bit of packet. So, um, did you find out what legal advocates mean? That's a good question to ask. So, there was a question about uh, in the. Mm, yeah, one of the first paragraphs. In one of the first paragraphs about, uh, I'm sorry, no, it's um, uh, second bullet. Second bullet yeah, second about question, question. caregiver, parents, caregivers, tutors, or legal advocates. So my understanding, I, I can think of an example is we have a team that comes in often who um, is autistic, and so he has a caregiver or legal representative that is often with him, but um, just kind of. I'm trying to word this correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, helps him navigate the library and helps with decision making. And so that that would be my example of a legal advocate. I don't know if Anne or Becca have more to 
more to add as far as that term goes. No, the only thing that came to my mind in this, and we did see this wording in yeah. several other libraries in the state, and I've reached out to a few um, team librarians that I know in Austin, have, was for 15 years before moving to Colorado, um, was perhaps it could reference as well as kids that might be in foster care. Mm -hmm. I feel like Guardian could maybe cover that as well, but I don't, I don't know enough about what it would mean if you're a child in foster care to know if a guardian or a legal advocate, but so, like both of those would speak to, you know, a potential situation like that. Guardian would, would meet somebody I, that was, that was uh, granted power to be a foster parent under the, uh, under the, uh, Fancy neglect or whatever mm -hmm. statute. A legal advocate would be maybe more like a guardian ad litem, which I don't think would, would be someone who would typically be bringing the child to the library. Okay. Guardian would be a Sure. So it might be, you know, language that is Maybe potentially unnecessary. unnecessary. Yeah. Like just say guardian. So we could essentially. Well, yeah, I feel like we've covered it with everything, all the other examples we've provided. So can we change legal advocate to legal guardian? That would be sufficient. Okay, that, I went ahead and made a documented correction in that document. I can put it on screen if you'd like, or unless you want to take my word for it, but that's it. Um, yeah, just to kind of speak about this, we there was. We had a lot of good discussion, um, especially about trying to uh, thread the needle about uh, really feeling, giving the teens a space that's dedicated to them, but also empowering their parents to be able to be understood, to understand what's what's going on in that space yeah. and be able to to do that. But we also, so it's, it's really, we kind of really tried to really find good language here to do that. We think we've arrived at a good place. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I think is that you know, it's a new space, and if it turns out that we uh, that we need to readdress this sooner than our normal cadence of, of policy review, then we can come back and do that. This is the only group that has exclusive use in the library, isn't it? Well, we changed it to uh, not we, we changed, changed that, that word. Wording. Yeah, so that it was the uh, it was they're now they're dedicated. Definitely. So team spaces oh, are dedicated, dedicated right. to patrons ages twelve to. We have found that. Um, <clears throat> is there any they might not. is there any other space that's yes in some ways i mean we really want our children's area to be a true children's area so if there's an adult there without children we will let them know that there's other areas in the library that are more suitable but if what but if they decide they don't move what, you're, are you trying to do something to get them to move we would ask them not to hang out there uh, i, I remember when we talked about the policy of taking pictures that I remember being told that night that we couldn't stop somebody right. from taking pictures of little kitties in yeah. that area. You can't. You unfortunately cannot. Right. But but when we've we had an adult, but we can order them out. When the, when they have set when there have been adults sitting in the children's area who are not with children, <laughs> we have asked them to find seating somewhere else in the library. Just because it makes Parents feel uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Well, yeah, they're not as likely to come and use that space if yes. someone without children is, you know, in the children's area. And there are lots of beautiful spaces for people to sit now, and there are very few places to sit in the children's area. Um, yeah, we really want that space dedicated for children and their families. So, and we may have to. You know, Put something in our conduct in the library policy mm -hmm. about the children's space to, to say, you know, this space is meant for the children and their caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah. ask that, you know, adults without children right. find seating elsewhere in the building. Referring from using those dedicated spaces. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good work. And the, uh, and this policy does reference as a link to the conduct and library policy. So mm -hmm. the expectation yeah. is that they're going to follow all those policies, all those policies in that policy, plus these additional items. So correct. All right. Um, what about limitation on time? <laughs> can, can 
and uh, use like the gaming equipment. So that would be more part of the procedures that we'll be coming up with. Um, and if there is a line for use of video games, we will put it, we are going to implement a system so that, you know, everyone gets a equitable access to video gaming. We're actually gonna put up a whiteboard and just have people kind of write their name and what time they arrived mm -hmm. so that um, everyone gets a fair shot to, we have suspected will be quite a popular area. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that teens really enjoy video games generally. So um, we suspect that, yeah, we'll have to implement some kind of a system. So, yeah, manage that. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify one thing about the video game piece too. Um, so we had a discussion about, and, and again, we always want to be careful about going from policy, mixing policy and procedure and not veering into the procedural line in our policies. But we did put some language in there that I asked to put in there about um, internet gaming and online gaming. Mm -hmm. So right now there is no plan to have these devices be connected to the internet. So I believe it's a, it's a switch, right? So, it is, it's an Nintendo so switch. Yeah, so Jeff, can speak to that. He's the yeah. one who's been uh, helping um, guide us on that. So that's the idea is that they're not going to be connected. They're not interconnected to the internet. They're not online gaming through them. They're not voice chatting or anything. So we have a lot more control about it. Well, there, there we is have all the control over it. That, that right. is, but that said, I, I was concerned because there might be devices down the road that are going to require you to be connected. So like, for example, like an Oculus, let's say we get an Oculus in there and you, and you need that. And so I wanted, I wanted to put in some language to defend us yeah. from that and say that, and uh, set expectations that they're going to adhere for the internet safety and acceptable use policy, which we've already defined. Um, and just understand too that uh, just kind of that standard disclaimer that video games use is that the online interactions that they have, they're not rated by the ER, ESRB. Um, and so again, things that they might encounter in there Aren't, aren't things that people necessarily read. So uh, we're not we're not planning on implementing that right now, but mm -hmm. I just want to have that language in here to set that expectation should we come we start to integrate devices that require us to be online. Okay, so uh, I don't know, Lisa, do you have anything else you want to add? I don't. Okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, so far we've we have a one a request to change to change legal advocate to legal guardian in that second bullet. Does anyone have any other feedback? Okay, so in accordance with our policy adoption procedure, we have three options here. We can uh, accept it as read. We can accept it with the uh, accept this policy with the noted changes tonight, or a board member can ask for a second reading, which we'll do at the next meeting. So the floor is open for any motion. I move to approve it as we've made a little change. Okay. I second that. All right. So let's move and second it. All in favor of approving the team spaces policy with the <laughs> this evening? Say aye. 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 All right. So approved. We have a team spaces policy now. I just want to thank Becca and Amy for their hard work. Amy couldn't be here tonight. She's our team librarian. They worked really hard on this. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Was, this was a good policy. To... It was a fun experience for me. It's the first time that an opportunity to do something like this. It's very exciting to see our space come to fruition. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Well, thank you for all the research. I know it took a long, that was a lot of research. <laughs> yeah, it's her to be here tonight. She did do a lot of well, work, um, like work on that. Tell Amy thank you for that as well. Yeah, sure. So, Okay, next item on the agenda is bookmobile replacement. So we have with us tonight Katie <laughs> Canarder, who is our mobile services supervisor, and she's very good at her job. Um, but last <laughs> fall, when, good night, Becca. Hi, Becca. Um, last fall, when we were working on the budget, um, Trustee Dunworth said, well, maybe we should just replace our bookmobile because we are you know, budgeting about $20,000 a year for maintenance on it. And it is a 2010 vintage vehicle. And like all vehicles, it will wear out. Uh, and so we uh, tasked Katie with finding out just what do bookmobiles cost now? Um, mm -hmm. How long does it take to get one? Mm -hmm. Because there's not Joe's pretty good bookmobile lot that you can go <laughs> and tick a bookmobile off of. These are custom vehicles that you have to order. That we know of. 
um, <laughs> that we know of. And so we asked Katie to do this. Now, there, this is not an action item for tonight. We are not deciding that we are going to purchase a new bookmobile. This was Katie investigating what one would cost. And this information will then be incorporated into our strategic planning and future planning. Because when you hear what she tells you, we can't go to Joe's pretty good bookmobile lot and get one tomorrow, um, even if we had money. So Katie did a slideshow for you. I think Jesse's pulling it up. Okay. 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 Next one. Thank you. Okay, so just a little background of what the bookmobile does in the community. Um, we go to schools, we go to neighborhoods, we go to daycares, and we attend events um, in Severance and Windsor. And if West really ever had an event, we would be there. <laughs> um, so a couple of things that uh, we've heard back, just some feedback from the community. We get this from a lot of different patrons, um, usually our older crowd. Uh, this is wonderful. I remember visiting Bookmobile when I was a child. This really takes me back. Um, what a great service you're offering to the community. Thank you. I don't have the ability to drive to the library. This is great. Uh, this is one of my favorites here. The Bookmobile is a, a unique experience that I use to help our students transition into being independent mm -hmm. adults. That is from uh, the Director of Exceptional Student Services for Weld County, um, Jennifer Sedegat. And she... It just opened up my eyes to something that we really haven't thought about. We um, go to the ESY program, the extended school year program, every summer, um, all, all ages. And she said that when what she's doing and why she's having us there is the kiddos that come on, she's trying to transition them into being independent. And they, they get into certain situations and they'll come on the book of it. It's kind of a tight area. There's other people on there. They have to get used to that. They have to um, basically, you know, proceed in a certain way and learn certain skills. And she thinks the bookmobile helps with that tremendously. And she has asked us back for years. Um, and we've always done it just because we love to participate in any kind of a school setting. And now like that just was clarification for why. Um, so that's community next. <laughs> so a couple of stats for 2022. Uh, patrons served uh, a little over like 11,000. Items circulated over 21,000. Hours on the road, 683,000 plus. Um, regular weekly stops, 16. Special events for last year, we attended 10. Uh, we have pop-up stops through the summer and soccer Saturdays through the fall. That is pretty much what we do regularly yearly. Uh, we'll add things here and there when different things pop up, new events pop up all the time around town, and we always try to get our foot in the door. Uh, next. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to get into like the different kinds of bookmobiles. So this Thomas built platform is what we have right now. Um, but when we bought it new, it was like $250,000, the one that we actually have. They're up to $360,000. Uh, you can get an electric package that jumps it quite a bit. Um, and they, they do not do trade-ins for that. So that was Thomas. And then that they're the only ones, by the way, that have that type of vehicle. Um, the rest of them are a little bit different, a little, you'll, you'll see. So this one, uh, several different companies provide a step van model. Again, you're in that 350 to 500 range. You can possibly get a hybrid conversion kit that also jumps the price. They do not have fully electric options for this version. Um, there's, they wouldn't quote the conversion price on that one. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that all of these are custom. Every time you go in, you have to dictate exactly what you want. I mean, they have so many options. You have to tell them what you want. Um, yeah, and then just like it says, trade in accepted depending on the manufacturer. So, a couple of them, yes, that the had step man would take trade ins, a couple of them would not. Next. All right. So, this one is, uh, by the way, most of these are diesel. This particular package here, the E450, which is the one on the left, you can get that in a regular light um, engine. So, but we find that the diesels really do better with the load that we have. 
So this one, no electric options. You've got your 245 to 370 range. The load is a little smaller. What I found to be difficult with these in particular, you cannot get two desks at either end and you need that option. Uh, if you try to cram two desks at one end, you, you're not serving anybody. There's so many people on there trying to come through. We need them separated and we need that spread out. Um, okay, next. So then you've got your, I really liked this, the Freightliner M2. Oh, wow. This, <laughs> <laughs> um, this has the same load capacity that we have, but yet the cab would be air conditioned and <laughs> oh heated. Just saying that would be a bonus for you. So, yeah. um, so you've got this. This one is your. She's she's pretty. Four hundred to five hundred and fifty thousand. They do have a fully electric package. She would not quote me on that <laughs> the price on that one. Um, so trade ins accepted on this as well. Now. The kicker to all of this, no matter. Oh, this yeah. is a really silly question. Can you access the back from the cab? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. This this is great. You have to be kind of little. There's this little, <laughs> this little opening. You can kind of squeeze through and get in there. And I thought to myself, like some of my staff now, I have a couple of very tall gentlemen, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. It would just be kind of funny to watch this. Um, just a question about the electric pieces. So, because you have the vehicle running. Pretty much all day, right? Whenever it's just stop somewhere, you have a generator kind of going. We do. Now, our typical stops are about an hour long. So mm -hmm. the generator is running for an hour. We shut down. We move on. Runs for an hour, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not running all day long. The longest we run it is Harvest Fest, and that one runs a good solid six hours, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it does beautifully. It's mm -hmm. fine. And we tested her out again when we were, you know, during the renovation. We had her out in the parking lot. And she had a good five, six hour time frame, and it was no big deal. Well, I guess I'm, just, I'm wondering though, I don't know if you know the answer to this is when they say electric electric vehicles available, so it drives electric, but once, you, once you're there, can you use all the, mm. can you use it in an operational way? Still a generator. Still a generator. So, oh, yeah, and they do have like solar and they have batteries, but we, ours actually has that. We have solar capability, mm. we have um, battery backups, um, and then we also have a generator. And it's, it is okay. that now there are, and there's one other company that Ann asked me to look into. Um, it was kind of late in the game and I reached out to them. They have not gotten back to me yet. Um, so I don't, and they are an all electric company. Yeah. So when I have more information on them, I can definitely pass that on and you, you have that option as well. Um, so I don't have prices on that and how exactly that works. You do have to have a charging station with yeah, those. That's so, yeah, that's what I'm questions. You have to get the yeah. structure to charge something like that. Yeah. Okay, so any of these vehicles, 18 plus months for delivery. So if we were to call tomorrow and say, I want this, you're talking 18 plus, and a lot of them were two years. Um, yeah, 18 plus two years. Wow. Yeah, one of them was 12 years, but that was also one of the, the or I mean 12 months. <laughs> 12 months. So much will change. I know. <laughs> okay, so that is why I also added this. So this was not asked of me. And I was just like, you know what, here's, here's the deal. If we're talking that kind of a delivery date, what's it like to update our own? She's got good bumps. She's not, she's not ready to be put out to pasture yet. You know, I mean, she just needs a little bit of work. So I asked our current service station, um, which is Who's Got Automotive, go ahead and flip what it would be if we had an overhaul her. Like if the major things on her went out, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. So an entire engine replacement plus labor is 28,700, as you can see. Transmission plus labor is another 10. Um, an air brake overhaul, you know, you're close to seven there. So total for all three is about 4,600 or $46,000. <laughs> to me, that's value um, considering what it would be to yeah. buy a brand new bookmobile. <laughs> now, I also only looked into bookmobiles our size. That's what I was asked to look into is comparative size. Um, we're not looking at trying to get a smaller vehicle at this time. It does not serve our purpose. Uh, we have like, just for an example, at Grandview, when we go there, we have almost 200 kids come through that bus in three hours. We cannot do that in a smaller vehicle. That's just not possible. Um, so we would have to change how we serve the community, which, you know, for the future that may change, but right now that is not. Does, um, 
Does Pooter and High Plains, do they have? High Plains? High Plains have an entire fleet. I mean, yeah. they're. I mean, they, they have like a dozen. They have a huge. huge are, yeah, and too many cover. rural pockets that they, yeah. that they serve. Yeah. What about Pooter, though? That's a good question. I Pooter forget. did not, but they were looking into it. So okay. when I, yeah, I think it was last year that I was researching. I was just wondering if, if this is somewhat of a thing of the past in a lot of libraries. It's not. They're actually growing. So these companies, the reason we're so backlogged is because of the mm -hmm. orders. Um, the other libraries are just getting in and they're, they're like, they see a need for it and they're jumping on it. So, yeah, so if we did want to replace ours, we would need to. Yeah, really and, into that. in the upcoming sort of October, the state convention. And, uh oh, uh, Cal, yeah, Cal, Cal, okay. Cal Con. Yeah. There is, there is, uh, there was two vendors last year that has big setups. Come, maybe might be people you talked to. I don't yeah, know. I think Matthews was there. Um, they they were the first one that Thomas built bus. Because I went and got some of their brochures. Yeah. To look, yeah. and I saw kind of a show on, not the big one, but the kind of big vans. Yeah. And, and there was a pitch being made for. Um, multi-use jurisdictions of the same vehicle like mm -hmm. small towns oh, sure. it's yeah. used by the town for some it's used by the library for some and it's jointly owned and mm -hmm. operated yeah. anyways i like the layout of ours i had never mm -hmm. thought about the whole desk on either side yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. the shelving is good mm -hmm. you know the little benches allow you to sit down and read a story it doesn't look old or run down in the least I like that there's the awning outside. Mm -hmm. You know, if we can just revive that and, and get it, you know, all up to date for 10% of the cost of a new right. one that would take for free again mm -hmm. ever. Right? And that could add 10 years. Absolutely. Yeah. Fuel for us, like just so uh yeah, no the no uh the 18 months. The 18, 18 months? months? Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> one more cost of the cost got a very bit of cost of all the major upgrade. components. Yeah, there we go. So, so that, I mean, and, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a gearhead, but those are kind of the three parts, like you said, that would that are probably gearing towards end of life with a we need to replace right. to be able to extend the life of the vehicle. Is there anything else that, like you said, I mean, if it looks modern, if it, if everything inside is working okay, how, how much longer, we extend? How long would we extend the life at this point? She's when every like she just got serviced this morning and they were like she's in great shape. Um, she hasn't even hit 100,000 miles yet. She is at 72,440. And so I mean she's just we we maintenance all the time. We are upkeep on that all the time. So with current you know good upkeep, I, I'm not asked them. I can definitely get back to you on like how long do you think she'll last with this? Um, but still like. I mean, like an apples to apples, like just we've got the right space for storage for it. Let's yeah. say we get one of these big ones and then we don't have indoor space to keep it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would have to if it was oh, the right. Right. Okay. 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 These vehicles they will fit in the garage. Like I just oh, yeah. like to give me this last one that that one I like. Yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah. better than yeah. 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 the yeah. garage. So right. Anything? I you know I did it's well <laughs> They call the mobile Lucy, by the way. That's why she keeps saying she. <laughs> yeah. It's a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> names to inanimate objects is well, a dangerous yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it very hard to right. part with it. We did That's true. true. That's true. <laughs> so can I ask a couple of questions? Sure, absolutely. So, Katie, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, first off, you showed some numbers about total usage in, in terms of books. We're, we're building a library in Severance, which I think has to represent probably a third of your stop area or usage area. Or, or can you tell me how much you service in the bookmobile in Severance on a percentage basis that'll go away that we won't be going to Severance anymore? I mean, we have a library to service that area. So yeah, I don't know if I can break those numbers up right now. Currently, we only have two stops there right now. Um, we have one at Town Hall and one at Rangeview. And that one at Rangeview is easily our most popular. Grand, most, Grandview. Oh, Grandview. Grandview. Okay. Yeah. 
but but they second? used to be. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they used to be. But it's still a school, right? Or yes. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 so yeah, can you give me a, a just a guess or what you think uh, the patron serve number is going to change to next year? You're eleven thousand four hundred fifty-eight. Are you going to be serving? If we had a library in severance, is that going to drop to seven thousand, six thousand? No, I don't 8, think so. If I were to take out one of the neighborhood stops in Severance, I will replace that with a school, hopefully, because our school stops do really well. Those librarians want us in there to supplement their own inventory. So there are series that are popular with children, and they can't get, like, mm -hmm. if theirs is checked out, their friend can't get that same book. And that's where we come in. We come, we bring what's popular, and they're able to do that. Um, so, no, I don't think our numbers will drop that drastically because I will replace them with something else. You're picking up new schools. Absolutely. We are asked, Ron, all the time to add stops. And you know, the, the thing that keeps us from doing that is that we just don't have enough staff mm -hmm. to handle any more stops. And so, you know, if we 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 we'll, will no longer go to town hall because we will have a library. That would be, good, that that would be the spot we want to go to. Right? That, would, that would be a good idea. Yeah, let's drop town hall. Yeah. Uh, so the next question I really have is, is yeah. the current uh, bookmobile we have, how many books on an average do you carry in that thing? How many titles? Uh, we can carry up to 2,500 items on there and we keep her stocked. I there, could you repeat that again? I'm sorry. 5,500. A 100, 100. No, 2,500. 2,500. 2,500. Yes. And then it, it cycles through. So they. No, I, I get that. But how many books do you carry typically around there? I imagine you recycle a lot because that's so totally not a lot. Items. So that's going to include your books, that's going to include your uh, audio books, uh, your movies. Uh, your explorer kit. So it's that number is just as a whole. I have not broken it down by section. So 2,500 items. Is that yes. the first? Okay. The last question is Do you have any issues, concerns, or any desire to serve, or do we, do we as a group have a desire to serve the handicapped kids uh, or the senior citizens who can't? Oh, absolutely. There's no way you can get in the bookmobile unless you're between the ages of. 12 and 40, everybody else too old can't make the steps. And Actually, I'd like to say no to that because we have a stop at 55 plus resort in Water Valley and the name 55 plus, they, they come on and they love it. They love our crew, they love coming. Uh, we have a patron there who is wheelchair bound. We have a rack that we actually fill with items that they can peruse and that we know they like and we bring them out there to them and they can actually look through them there and they're very appreciative of that. So but they, they can't access the book. they can't access the bookmobile. They cannot get up onto the bookmobile. Not not the wheelchair bound. The other bookmobiles you were showing, do they have access for handicaps? You uh, can put a list on it. What we have found in <clears throat> is the need is not there. That is possibly one or two patrons that we currently serve now. Um, and we also serve those people with our lobby stops with our adult services department. They service them in a completely different way. We try, we go out of our way to actually, like I said, we have a cart and we take it down and we put those books down there. Um, but if need be, they have other avenues. Anne or Bill, do we have any requirement now, you know, a federal requirement to be able to serve that's the handicap as a public entity if we bought a new bookmobile? Or we would be required to make sure it's accessible? I know don't that? know that it's a requirement. It's always been a feature that you can get. Um, I can definitely but, Bill, do you know? It, it's not a, uh, a permanent facility. So I, I don't believe that we are required to have that. And we do have accommodations that we are providing. Okay. Thank for, you. For what it's worth, our adult services librarian recently asked me about investigating homebound services. Mm -hmm. Um, which could look a variety of ways and a variety of vehicles it could even be a personal vehicle. Uh, so what we're doing right now um, is just reaching out to other libraries to find out, you know, how do they determine to implement a service like that? So they do a needs assessment, you know, how do you find out if you've got enough 
individuals in your community that would take advantage of a service like that to, to warrant, um, you know, implementing that. So we are kind of looking into what that might look like at Clearview Library District. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the last question I had, you mentioned two desks. Uh, is there a goal to have, you know, uh, look up workstations on the bookmobile, we bought one? Um, as far as like, when you say look up workstation, what does that look like to you? A computer where you can roll in and do the data searches that people do in a library. Gotcha, okay, so we, how we're servicing that right now is through an iPad. Um, mm -hmm. What we're gonna do for uh, the extended school year is we're actually gonna bring Chromebooks in. She requested that so they can actually start to learn how to navigate themselves. Um, so we have, we have spaces, we actually have little tabletop spaces that we can set those and people can access them right now currently. Um, I don't see a need for like an actual station itself. People don't come on there and hang out for that entire hour. They come on, they do their thing, they'll sit down with their kiddos and they'll read for a little while. They might do the craft or, you know, play with some of the toys or whatnot. Um, they've never asked to use computer services yet. Okay, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have one question, if I can ask. Um, I really like the overhaul numbers, of course, because they're relatively low. I'm just wondering with two new elementary schools coming on in 18 months, do we see a need where we're going to eventually need two bookmobiles, or can we handle the demands that we see in the next two to three years with just the one? Or staff would actually like set that into motion. Like, I don't think we need a second vehicle for those three schools, not yet. Um, I suppose if they're they kind of we feel overwhelmed and they're like, oh yeah, we could definitely service this better if we had of your staff and two vehicles, we could cross that bridge. But right now, I think just with more staff who can actually work those day shifts, and I'm not, I'm not running them ragged. <laughs> well, what we find too is that in the neighborhoods, you know, especially during the winter months, it's almost people just don't come out of their houses. And so if we had to make choices, because we had one bookmobile, I would say go to the schools rather than go into the neighborhoods, serving more people, it, especially once the time changes and it gets dark early, right? Because people don't come out of their homes in the summertime, they'll come out and go to the bookmobile. Once it gets dark at five o'clock, they don't want to come out. And so I think it's a matter of assessing where the greatest need is with what we have. Right. And if that means we go to the schools, and you know, just so Ray knows, because he's new to this, we have a, a strong relationship with the school district. Casey meets with Molly Amundsen, mm -hmm. who is the school librarian um, on a regular basis. And we share information back and forth. And Becca will be taking over that from Casey so Casey can do other things. But so we do have a relationship. And so I think it would be a matter of going in and talking to the school librarians to see how strong are their collections, what is the need. Right. We don't want to duplicate something the schools are already doing, mm -hmm. but do we provide, we provide another program called BAN, which is Books and More, where we go into the school without the bookmobile and we take some of our tech toys and we do a program during their lunch hours. And we do that at the middle school, um, middle schools, or we do high schools uh, and the high school mm -hmm. and the yeah, and the charter schools. And so there's a lot of different ways to serve the schools. Mm -hmm. And it's a conversation with the school librarians to see what's the best value for us and what helps them the most. Yeah, like Katie said, I, we look at it as how can we help supplement what they already have in their own libraries? Yeah. You know, we're not trying to bring exactly what they have. What would be the point in that? So that's where that communication and relationship helps inform us on what can we bring? You know, how can we provide, you know, more, in a, you know, in addition to what they have access to? So this, this question might be moot because with the branches opening, we're changing, but can you talk me through how many, when we're using, using the van as an alternative? So I know there's been instances where you got to use the van. I think mm -hmm. last summer we had a period where the bookmobile was out of commission for, mm -hmm. for weeks yeah. and we had to use the van. What's the process for transitioning to van usage? <laughs> And then what's what happened? Like, what's the experience that patrons have? And it is okay. Yeah, 
it, it's a feat. It's um, we have to set up shop. We take tents. We take tables. We take books. We take chairs. Um, we take all of our tech. Everything. And it's a very limited selection. But I would rather take their hold yeah. and offer a limited selection than not go at all. Um, I want to be there. We want to service those people as much as we. Can. A lot of those neighborhood stops, those folks don't come into the, you know, Windsor Southern yeah, Library. Yeah. That is their library visit. Mm -hmm. And so her team has been phenomenal in not um, canceling stops and just trucking through even when the bookmobile's in the shop. They've done such a good job. How much of the circulation is deliveries? In other words, people like call it. in or order things and you put, um, it, on yes. the, you put it on the bus. They pick it up. It's actually much smaller than um, you would think. Like they, they like to come in for roots. They come on. They like to look at the selection, and the like, shelf oh, is little. It's a much smaller. Right. Than no, no, I mean, I mean, do you do you take a lot of stuff to deliver? Like you go to fifty five plus, and well, we got a hundred books that people have ordered. And we're delivering. Right. That would be our whole system. So that's. I think that's. Oh what you're yeah. Doing. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that um, significant it, it's significant for that particular shop when you bring that stuff up. They love that. That that is the service. So they know how to order yes, something. Yeah. We've worked with them. We've shown them how to navigate our catalog and right. put stuff on hold. Um, yeah, that's been great for them. But all, overall, people like to come on and peruse. They see yeah. us, they come on, they sit. They just go. like they do in the library. You yeah. know, they like to just kind of stumble upon something. And just kind of ask about the, the van again. So the fact is, once Severance Branch opens mm -hmm. and that becomes a more of a courier van, will that will there even be a plan B if the bookmobile was out of commission? No. Um, the, what our plan B has been in the past before we would have anyone is we would try to take our own vehicles and cram everything in them. It works for me. I have a pickup truck. It, it doesn't work for the entire staff. Um, I have asked um, in the past to look into like say a minivan or some sort of a smaller SUV type vehicle that we can cram everything in if need be. Um, those, that would also be handy for just events that we don't take them to. Uh, so we're not relying on staff to have a vehicle that can do that. I would say that being said, the courier operates in the AM and the early morning hours. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously with the branch and severance, it'll, it'll be more extensive than yeah. it is right now. Yeah. Whereas our neighborhood stops are more in the evening, late afternoon and early evening. So okay. there could be instances in which it works, you yeah. know, to do courier services yeah. in the morning and then bookmobile neighborhood stops, mm -hmm. should the bookmobile be out of commission. In fact, so, it, it, with the courier, you know, right now we have a um, mobile services staff who is driving the courier van from this building over to the Windsor Library. We are, uh, we will eventually hire a driver, but it's so few hours right now that it didn't make sense to put some on the pay somebody on the payroll for seven or eight hours a week. You're gonna you'd have a hard time finding something for, for seven or eight hours. Especially those hours. Yeah, and it's got to be early in the morning. Yeah. No, so you know when severance is up and running and we start making deliveries, the idea is to have the courier start at seven o'clock in the morning, and by ten they should be done. Ten thirty at the latest. And then the van is available for mobile services and public services staff to use. The kicker is that anybody who drives the van, you have to pay workers' compensation at the highest rate, which is like between six and seven percent. So we try not to have their salary. Yeah. So we, we try not to have anybody who's earning a lot of money as a driver on that policy because it adds up pretty fast. We just look for it. We, we have Jesse Jones. <laughs> if you want Jesse to get a raise, like, you know, just this. <laughs> I write, you know, we have a librarian who asked if she could drive the courier van. And when we, well, we would have to pay per year, it's going to be about $4,000 a year, you know, on the off chance that she might drive the van once in a while. And it's not cost effective to do that. So right now, yep. The trustee don't like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but I have to get to an appointment. So, uh, Katie, thank you for a uh, wonderful presentation. 
I got a dinner meeting, so what can I say? Thanks, uh, we appreciate your time. I think that's the last uh, item on the agenda, so I'll bid you all good evening. Bye. An appointment at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, to your point, I mean, at some point as we grow, so first of all, severance is going to make a big difference in the way we operate, you know, as far as the bookmobile. And no, we're not going to go, you know, we used to do that in the early days of the bookmobile here when we really didn't have a good handle on what we were doing. Right. So the bookmobile <clears throat> would go one block away from the Windsor Severance Library and they got, the director got complaints all the time. It's like, why are you one block away from the library? People could walk one block and get to the library. And over time, we learned. Now we do go to Tosher and we do the extended school year. Right. Uh, that's, and that's, that's in our backyard, but yeah. not the specialized population. Yeah. Yeah. And so we try not to have our bookmobile stops close to the library. We try to space them out and go where people might have a harder time accessing library services because that is something we have heard from school kids mm -hmm. that in this in these modern times parents are just too busy to take mm -hmm. their kids to the library well it's important to note, note that tozer and mountain view serve it like really kids that's where they get bust from right. so yeah currently right. i know that right. might change and a lot of the kids will say you know like mom and dad are too busy to bring them to the library after school or on the weekend because there's so many other activities going on and so it does, this case is said, for some people, it is the only access they have to library services. Um, but as we grow and with our facilities plan, if we were to build another branch, we would, we're always assessing. When Katie goes into a neighborhood, if she gives it a fair shot and no one uses it, we pull that stop after we give it a fair amount of time, but we will pull it. And so we're always assessing who's using it is there a better place we could go with that? And she she doesn't let that like slide away. No, no. One of the things it's boring for the staff. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, for you to go into a neighborhood and sit there for an hour. Yeah, yeah they don't want that. Yeah, they don't want that. We can do anything. We literally. And I mean, I think I clocked us doing twelve miles one day, and that's you know for some of us no big deal. For others, I was like, I'm so sorry. So, I mean, but it's, we try, we get out there, we make sure we're known, and, you know, we'll know if it's going to fail, it's going to fail. All right, so the next steps will be, you know, for us to look at strategic planning, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll at some point have to make a decision. Right now, as Katie said, we just had it serviced, it's in good shape, none of the things that were on the list are immediate issues, and we do have money budgeted for some issues in case things, because we've had issues yeah. in the past where uh, we're, we're fortunate now we've got, we used to have to drive down to Englewood for a lot of our servicing. We found a little bit closer uh, for servicing. So we're in a good place right now, but we need to be aware because we either need to do an overhaul, we need to start thinking about a new vehicle and during our strategic planning process, you know, one of the things uh, that keeps coming up is this needs assessment, which we may have to do a needs assessment overall for our community to try to provide the best services. Great. No, thank you. Job, yeah, thank yes. you. Very good work. Appreciate it. You guys want these? We'll make the slideshow available and anybody who wants one. Well, that was just a little It is. Thank you, Rochelle. And every year we're invited to more and more events. And as the community grows, that's just going to continue. I mean, it's really the mascot for the library. Yeah, absolutely. It's a giant billboard. Yeah, it is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, please. Well, thank you for your time. Appreciate that. Okay, thank you. All right, next up. Uh, so we're going to review, review the upcoming agenda and upcoming meetings. So at our April meeting, well, first of all, on April 6th, we have the joint session with the Friends and Foundation. And then our, our regular meeting, it, it is time for our annual annual review of the bylaws, which Paul has been working on with Bill. And so we'll get those to you with enough time for you to take a look at those. Yes. Um, and remember that there's always a first and second reading bylaws. So that will be coming up. Um, we also have a quarterly update on the director's goals, and we'll have some policies review, as well as anything else that comes up. 
bring it down and that. Good. Um, just to be clear, next Thursday at six, not five thirty. Six o'clock. Yeah. And they're not here because we need the bigger room. Yes. We need the bigger room. Yes, gotcha. And we will have some things to eat as it is six o'clock. I think I anticipate the meeting will probably be a full two hours. Okay. Great, thank you. All right, next on the agenda is adjournment. Floor is open for a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, uh, motion to adjourn by Krusty Gerstner. Look for a second. Krusty, I'll second that. Krusty, I'll second. Move to second that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So we adjourn at 6.51 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night.